All right, now we're going to do a microcontroller versus Linux flight controller comparison. And in this corner, weighing 62 grams, we have the Navio and Raspberry Pi combo. Yay! And in this corner, we have the 38 gram Pixhawk. Yeah! All right. So, Navio is our Linux example, and Pixhawk is our microcontroller example. Now let's start with the pros of a microcontroller FC. Uh, first of all, it is much faster, computationally speaking, and it, is, it has been optimized for real-time applications. Now what do I mean by real-time applications? This has a very specific context here. Uh, real-time means that the processes that are running on your microcontroller or running on your application are time sensitive and bad things can happen if they don't get done within a particular window. So for example, a drone is a real-time application because let's say we have a process running on our computational board, whatever it is, that sends PWM outputs to our motors and that, hap that should happen every 10 microseconds. Well, what happens to the drone if that process runs behind and it doesn't send signals for two seconds? Well, that means our drone isn't spinning its props for two seconds. And, you know, let your imagination run wild with what can happen to your drone 50 feet in the air without spinning props for two seconds. Bad things can happen. So real-time applications are time-sensitive and microcontrollers have been optimized for dependability in real-time applications. So if you tell uh, the process it needs to be done in 10 microseconds, it's basically going to get done on a microcontroller in 10 microseconds. Another pro is it is a dedicated computing component for flight control firmware. So this the computing power of the Pixhawk isn't being shared with anything else. It is only being ran by uh, your autopilot firmware. And uh, you can supplement it with external computing if you would like, like we've already discussed previously with a Raspberry Pi. And it is much more mature technology. Uh, using microcontrollers for real-time applications has been done for a long time and it is very, very dependable and trustworthy. Now the cons, these are my opinions, the there is a bit of a higher learning barrier of entry relative to Linux-based flight control boards, if you already have Linux information and knowledge. Uh, it's not as simple to switch firmware versions relative to Linux boards. Uh, you have to manually set up companion computer and microcontroller communication, which is a bit of a convoluted process, again, relative to Linux-based flight controllers. And it's hard to interact with the environment of a Pixhawk. You can't simply SSH into the Pixhawk, for example. There are other methods, but it's just not as simple. Now to the Linux uh, example of a flight control baseboard. The drone's firmware runs on familiar Linux environment, and a lot of people are familiar with Linux, so a Linux baseboard will be very intuitive to those people. The cool thing is it unites uh, microcontroller functionality with companion computer functionality into one single entity. Now what is the microcontroller functionality? Well that is the uh, real-time dependability of this Linux board. You can tell it to get done with the process in 10 microseconds for example and it will do a good job at getting done in that time window. And the companion computer functionality is you have a companion computer basically built in. So with the Pixhawk, we had to connect a Raspberry Pi to it and um, lay down the framework for the Raspberry Pi Pixhawk communication to make a, an OpenCV computer vision based application. But with a Linux flight control board, it's all one entity. So we don't have to make any efforts to uh, make a communication bridge between our com companion PC and our autopilot flight controller because it's the same thing. And it's very easy to set up and interact with. For example, you can just SSH into your drone because it's running on Linux. That means you could be flying around and uh, you could SSH into it, fix a problem, and fix it. There you go. And it's easy to update the drone's firmware wirelessly because 
your this Raspberry Pi can connect to the internet. So you could just SSH in, uh, pull down the latest uh, code update from GitHub for RD Pilot, for example, and make that the firmware that's running on your board. And there you go, you just updated your firmware. Now there are some cons. Um, as I said, drones require real-time computing. And while this Linux-based flight controller can perform real-time applications, it is not optimized for it, and it's not as good as doing it as a microcontroller is. So for that reason, a Linux FC is more likely to fail due to missing or due to delayed completion of processes versus microcontrollers, which are more dependable at getting those done. And just a bit of uh, an informational nugget, uh, normal Linux distributions are not real-time, but you can achieve it with the preempt RT patch, which is relatively new. What does that mean? It means that there aren't a lot of industrial applications out there that require real-time functionality that are using Linux. Most of them are using microcontroller boards because it's been around forever, and so you're not going to see a, um, a wide amount of industrial use for Linux-based flight controllers at this point. 